Imagine if every computer, phone, and a gadget you use could be hacked. Pretty scary, right? Hackers are always looking for ways to steal your important information. But here's the good news. Your devices have a hidden protector keeping them safe. It's called the TPM. And it's like a secret shield that helps guard your data from attacks. But before I explain what is TPM, and you have to understand why it was invented, as in what's the problem it's trying to solve. Now let's go back a bit in the history and imagine an online banking system in the early 2000s. Without TPM, the security of the transactions relied heavily on software-based encryption which could be compromised by malware or hackers. If a hacker managed to install a malware, they could easily exfiltrate the key used to encrypt your computer. Theoretically, you can store the encryption keys in your hard drive or memory, but essentially you are only moving the problem elsewhere for it to be eventually stolen. So what do we do then? There has to be a way to securely keep the encryption keys and also make it tamper resistant. Now that you know the problem, introducing the solution. The TPM Crypto Processor. A TPM or Trusted Platform Module the technology is designed to provide hardware-based security-related functions. It's a secure crypto processor or a microcomputer in itself that is designed to carry out cryptographic operations to store essential and critical information on PCs to enable platform-level authentication. Now you'd ask, how does it even work? So TPM generates and stores parts of encryption keys for PCs. Let's take an example for BitLocker. This is an essential disk encryption feature available in Windows computers and it heavily relies on TPM, okay? Imagine you're a business professional who often travels a lot and always carries a laptop with sensitive client information data on it. Losing it would be an absolute nightmare. To safeguard this data, you enable BitLocker. Now here's what happens in the behind the scenes, okay? Pay attention. So the TPM already comes with a storage root key and it comes burnt right into the TPM module, right? After the factory when it was shipped. The first thing it does is encryption key generation. When you enable BitLocker, you encrypt it and ask the TPM to wrap the key and generate a unique encryption key that locks your data and now store it in the hard drive. Now, if someone could get the wrapped version of the key from the hard disk, then technically what's to stop you from booting the computer externally from a USB drive using Linux or something like that and asking the TPM to just unwrap it so you can get the original decryption key. Now, what TPM also does is called key sealing or system integrity check. This is far more complex than it sounds, but as an example, each time you power on your laptop, the TPM verifies that the system has not been tampered with. If the BIOS, operating system, or any other factor that TPM had accounted for to verify the uniqueness of the system is found altered, the TPM detects it and prevents or denies unwrapping the key at all. Now these system integrity checks are just spaces or values within TPM and checked locally in a way that it can be used by the TPM to verify, but it cannot be read by any other system. So essentially you have something you can trust and makes it tamper proof and then deriving everything else from TPM to validate. It also does authentication, so if everything checks out, the TPM releases the key, allowing your encrypted data to be accessed. And if someone steals your laptop, they can't access your data without the encryption key, which is securely stored in the TPM itself. Even if they try to move the hard drive to another computer, the data remains inaccessible because the TPM also does system integrity check. Now what's interesting is it can do many other things. Let's go through them one by one. Okay. Now it does secure key storage. Now TPM can safely store your cryptographic keys for encryption like digital signatures and user authentication preventing unauthorized access to sensitive data. 
it performs platform integrity measurement. Now, what, what is that? During the boot process, the TPM can measure and record the system state, like firmware, operating system, uh, system components, and etc., to detect any modifications that could indicate a malware or unauthorized changes. It can do random number generation, which means TPMs can generate high quality random numbers crucial for secure key and generation and encryption algorithms. It helps in digital signature creation. So by utilizing the private keys, TPMs can create digital signatures to verify the authenticity of software and data. It also does remote attestation, and this one is an important one because TPMs can provide a mechanism for verifying a system's identity remotely and trustworthiness to other entities like a remote server by generating a unique digital certificate. And lastly, but an important one, it provides protection against firmware attacks. So TPMs can help mitigate attacks targeting the system firmware by verifying its integrity during the boot process. Now that you know and have an idea of how TPM works, it's also important to know its versions and the applications for the most newer version. At the time of the making this video, there are two versions of TPMs. TPM version 1.2 announced in the year 2009 and TPM version 2.0 announced in 2014. With 2.0 being a mandatory requirement for running operating systems for Windows and higher. An advancement was required for TPM 1.2 to 2.0 because of technological advancement and to improve security, flexibility, simplify management for easier discovery and support for better crypto algorithms like SHA-256 which was not supported in TPM version 1.2. And the group that decides the versions is the TCG short for Trusted Computing Group, which releases and certifies the manufacturers to manufacture the TPM crypto chip. As it has certified TPM chips manufactured by Infineon Technologies, the most common one, uh, Nuvoton and STM Microelectronics. There are a few others as well. So if you are in a Windows computer and just type uh, tpm.msc in a run window, you will see one of the manufacturers listed here as your crypto processor. Now let's go just a bit more deeper and there would be five options or implementations for TPMs, more specifically for TPM 2.0, uh, which are discrete, uh, integrated, firmware, software and virtual TPM solution. Okay, uh, let's explain them one by one, beginning with the discrete TPM. This is a dedicated solder chip that provides the highest level of security, as might be needed for a TPM used to secure the brake controller in your car. That's how important that is. The intent of this level is to ensure that the device it's protecting does not get hacked even via sophisticated methods. To accomplish this, the discrete chip is designed, built, and evaluated for the highest level of security that can resist tamper resisting of the chip, including probing it and freezing it with all sorts of sophisticated attacks. Next is integrated TPM. It is the next level down in terms of security. This level still is, has a hardware TPM, but it is integrated into the chip that provides function other than security. The hardware implementation makes it resistant to software bugs. However, this level is not designed to be tamper resistant. Third, the firmware TPM and is the most common one that you will encounter. A firmware TPM is like security system built directly into your computer's CPU or main processor. So instead of needing a separate chip, it uses a special safe zone inside the CPU called a trusted execution environment or in short TEE. Most modern CPUs like the ones from Intel or AMD will nowadays come built in with firmware TPM. The safe zone is like a super secure room where sensitive information like secret keys are stored. The TEE keeps the information hidden from the rest of the programs running into your computer, making it harder for hackers to get it. 
However, because the TPM is now part of the CPU and depends on the TEE, its security relies on several factors like how to secure the TEE operating system is and whether there are any bugs in the software running inside it. While it's a smart way to save space and add security, it's not as physically protected as having a separate chip. And next, the software-based TPM. This type of TPM can be implemented as a software emulator of the TPM. However, a software TPM is, is open to many vulnerabilities, not only tampering, but also the bugs in op any operating system running it. It does have key applications. It is very good for testing or building a system prototype with a TPM in it. For testing purposes, a software TPM could provide the right solution and approach. And lastly, the virtual or VTPM. Many IoT systems include sensors and cloud processing, which means virtualization. In a cloud environment, one clever way to implement a TPM is through a virtual TPM. The virtual TPM is a part of the cloud-based environment and it provides the same commands that a physical TPM would but it provides those commands separately in each virtual machine. Here's a screenshot of a virtual box hypervisor with a VTPM option. Now you must be thinking, why do we need five variations of it? This chart will give you a good look on how different TPMs and how they stack in order of security level and decreasing cost. As you can see, the type of TPM you choose depends heavily on specific requirements, whether it's robust hardware security for critical systems or cost-efficient solution for the cloud. TPMs offer a variety of options to meet your specific requirement. So how do you decide which TPM is right for your needs? It depends on actually just three key factors. The level of security that's required. So do you need maximum tamper resistance or just basic protection? Next, your budget. Are you prioritizing cost efficiency or is security worth the extra investment? And the third one is the application. Is it for a critical system, a gateway, or perhaps a cloud environment? For example, if you're securing a bank's transaction system, you would want to go for a dedicated discrete TPM. For an industrial or an IoT gateway, an integrated TPM might do the job. Now, for testing purposes and development teams, you may stick with your affordable software-based TPMs. And if you're managing virtual machines in the cloud, a virtual TPM makes the perfect sense. And well, that's a very short introduction of what TPM and its different varieties and how it can be applied in the real world. If you like the video, do share it with your friends and family whom you think would benefit from this video. And until your next tech session, bye now.